wonderful person on the planet. And then I listen and she just rocks the house. So today, guys, we are privileged and we're proud to have Totally Tony. Tony Blake's in the house. Let me see some jazz hands. She's going to do that today. I need the thumbs up hey, jazz hands, right? Hey, Tony is an international speaker, a consultant, an author, a comedian. She's she's inspirational. She's motivational. She's twisted steel, sex appeal. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Tony Blake. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so now do you guys click on me to be the 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 main one, or how do I get you're my the, picture? You're the presenter. You're the Good. presenter now, Tony. I have to hit presenter. No, you're already the presenter. So you, you can guys share your content. <laughs> okay, awesome. Oh my God, your little red nose is so cute. So happy Red Nose Day, everybody. I love it. Now I want to share my screen. How do I share my screen? You can do that at the bottom. You'll see um, an, a box with the arrow pointing upwards to share your content. Okay, Safari PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Can you see it now? Yay! Yeah. Awesome. awesome, awesome, awesome. So um, welcome to another conversation with the court team. Love you guys. So, so, so happy to be here. So today we're going to be talking, because it is Red Nose Day, we're going to be talking about socially responsible marketing. This is a really crazy time to be marketing. With everything going on, I know so many people are in this awkward situation asking for money. And it seems like, you know, there's tons of money being given away. It's like work is a complex mess right now. And we have all these questions and stuff going on. And I wanted to show you a couple of data points to build my message on. Number one, the main cause of stress, hello, 28% is people, okay? People are stressing us out, but 46% of it is workload. And this really applies to everybody. And wherever we put our thoughts, wherever we think, that develops how we feel. And that kind of creates our actions. So today, I'm going to woo woo. You hear the train coming. It's moving down the bend. Here comes the totally, totally train. And I want to put you on a train of thought about how we can de-stress ourselves and how we can de-stress our residents. Well, one of the top 10 marketing trends in 2020 is called brand integrity. And what this is really about is the fact that brands, oh, you know what, um, this is covering my, oh, I can move you. There you go. Brands are expected to behave ethically in every aspect of business. Can I get jazz hands on that, y'all? I mean, it's like, here's the deal. People today really need your core values to not just be something on a business card, something on your website. They need it to be the centerpiece of the story that you're telling about your property. So I want to share with you how important that is. Okay, now I'm going to slides. So here's a couple of data points I want you to see. 77% of consumers say that they have stronger emotional bonds to a purpose-driven company. So once you write down, get your pins out, write down purpose-driven company, 89, that's a huge percentage, like to get 89% of Americans agree on anything, of consumers believe purpose is demonstrated through how a company benefits the society. This is not just about environmental. It's really totally about society. 80% of people say that they are loyal to a business that helps them achieve a good life. And let me tell you something. One of my biggest contents that I've been writing is called um, Resident Loyalty, and it's the, the economic impacts of resident loyalty. Well, as many of you are putting together a new addendum to your lease, asking your residents to be accountable for their own safety and security and health and well-being, even though we're putting practices in place to keep COVID away from their life, they are going to have to be personally accountable for how they do that. We cannot be accountable for that. And let me tell you something. When you have great resident loyalty, your residents cooperate. They participate. They're going to come apart. 
But at this point, if you've not developed that relationship, that sense of community, it's going to be worrisome for you. So I want you to understand that there's an economic impact to loyalty and how we treat people. So here's another thing. 66% of consumers are willing to share to switch to a known from a known brand to an unknown purpose driven brand. Like there's just data point after data point after data point. And I'll share these slides with you. Um, Pete and Court will figure out some way that we can post these online or you know, make them available for, for people to download. Um, I wanna connect you to the Edelman Trust Barometer. So this is a global research project that I've been following for about six years. In 2018, the United States of America lost 37 points of trust with industry and the public. I think this is when we started getting those spam calls to our phone where, you know, like, I mean, it, you know, and, and, and like, what's crazy is that same year, China gained like 27 points. Like what the heck is going on um, in the world? But trust, wouldn't you agree that trust is important today? So I want you to go look at the research from Edelman. This is the 2020. And basically it said that, People, um, this year we asked Edelman Trust Barometer respondents to tell us how each institution is doing along with the list of challenging, challenging in society. And, and basically partnering with business, 42%, more than 10 say they trust business, but they want business to solve the problems. They're looking to us to solve the problems. And this is data that happened before COVID that 83% of people are, are worried that fear has eclipsed hope. And so there's all this news out there, all this stuff going on, but today, my friends, it's an opportunity to put our heart on our nose and to do something that's socially responsible and to make sure that when we're sharing with our residents that we're building that relationship, that we don't manipulate, that we inspire. Turn to somebody right, right now and say, we are going to inspire. We're going to fan the fire of desire with inspire. So I've written some content that I call human school. It's 12 habits of great human beings. And I believe today that we are being challenged to not just be great management people, but to rise up and to be great human beings. And success is measured by what you give. And this is interesting. How many of you believe, believe that there's givers and takers in the world? Like, right? I mean, there's givers and takers in the world. And, and the thing is that giving is actually how you receive. Like if you want to get you got to give and people in this world today, they want to get without giving you that dog don't hunt in Texas. Let me tell you something like you can't get without giving you reap what you sow. So do something. I mean, like we have to give to get and what we give you got what you got because you gave what you gave and you got what you got because you gave that. You want to get different, you got to give different and not manipulate, not in a manipulation way, but in an inspiration way. I will tell you something. I am here right now in this moment because of the character and the integrity of court for jazz hands for court, baby. Jazz hands for court, man. Listen, court rocks, but at the at, at, <laughs> at the front of the beast. There is one human being that is just frankly pretty doggone irresistible. And that's my friend, Mr. P. Regulus. Now, I told Pete we were doing Red Nose Day, and he sends this picture to me and says, Can you use it? I'm like, Oh, yes, I can. <laughs> because <laughs> Pete is not just an example, like, he is all heart. Like he doesn't just wear his heart on his nose. He is heart. Like the whole body, the whole thing is heart. And I believe, Pete, that you're not just an example of the of a great human being in the world, but you are obviously a legacy. 
You know, I believe success is, is measured by how the other people see us. Wouldn't you agree? And, and you know, I, I agree with what you're saying. I'm, I'm listening and I'm taking notes. And the first thing is I love that you start with steps is real right doing good is 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 something that is important but after all the stats and and you're going to give some examples and all that i'm gonna you know set it all aside and it, to me it's all about a couple things one is you got to care about about what you're doing about about your coworker. you got to care about your resident i mean if, if i mean if you, just don't, if you really don't care if you care more about you than you do the other person you might you might as well just hang up <laughs> So you're giving me some great accolades and a shout out. I appreciate it. But it starts because I care about uh, about Tiffany and, and some of these other people are on the call. Um, I care about the people I work with. I care about my customers. And then that drives me to build a relationship with them. Then I got a relationship and I care. Then all these fun ideas that Tony's going to talk about and the stuff, the Red Nose Day, then I'm going to have some fun with it. But I'm going to include my friends and it's not really work. So if you think what we're doing is work, yeah, that's a problem, you know, right? We got to, you got to turn it into something that you really want to do. So I'll turn it back over to Tony, but, but this, when she said it came up with this topic, I'm like, yes, there's no better day than Red Nose Day. Um, I know we're all going through a lot, but those of you who can give time, energy, uh, or, or give a hug, uh, now's the time. So thanks, Tony. Thanks for the shout out. Cooper says hi. Love the picture. How dang cute is he? So I want to introduce you to another website that I follow. It's called trendwatching.com. And at trendwatching.com, they introduced what they called the glass box. And the glass box trend is where companies have kind of been in the black box. And the, what's going on in the corporate office is not shared with the customer. Like residents don't see all the good work of what's going on in the main office and the charitable work. You go to a main office and there's all these amazing charity works that are going on, but the apartment resident doesn't know that. And what trend watching is saying is pull down the black box, have a glass box. You know, has your company participated in charitable activities? Does your company have a video or photo or details of, of that story? Does your company participate in any historic organizations, universities, civic causes? This is not about bragging. This is about telling the story of the character of your company in a way that people are drawn to you and make a choice. It's, it's like today, people will choose you because of your character. And <clears throat> I, I believe right now, especially with COVID-19, that we are learning more than ever the power of the human connection. Even though we're using all these digital platforms, we are seeking out that charitable thing. So I have a client in California that I just love, and they actually purchased and paid for and registered a trademark for Live Happy for Real Estate. So they own Live Happy for Real Estate. Well, they had put a neon sign in one of their new develops. They'd added it to their uh, website, but they had not really begun to show that they live happy and that, that how you can live happy. And so I don't have everything, but I have a couple of things. First of all, um, I came on as a consultant. We created this new um, hashtag, I live happy. Um, we found this book, Live Happy. We found a podcast, Live Happy Now, and there's a magazine. So, of course, all those are now in their social feed. They give them away as moving gifts. But then I found this thing where they have these happy walls. So you can actually go register your happy wall. So we put a happy wall at every property and residents have come in and put up notes about how they're living happy. And we created this cute little note for them to write on. And they literally, this, you know how you have those signs on the flagpoles as you drive into the community? It says live happy. It doesn't say just welcome and we have a pool. It says live happy, baby. And so they are a great example of a box brand. Let me tell you something. I, I made this slide up a few years ago and I love it. It says you can only pour what you're full of. Like if you let yourself fill up with stress and fill up with worry and fill up with fear, then that is exactly what you're going to pour out on the world. I just think that red nose day is a chance to be a little silly, to fill yourself up with joy, 
to fill yourself up with good things and and to look beyond yourself you know sometimes our self is a very high wall to climb it is very hard to get over ourselves but i want you to choose today to really look at what you're filling yourself up with to help you I realized, and I had completely forgotten I did this, but at totallytony.com, I started a kindness challenge last year. There are eight weeks of kindness challenges on my website that you can share with your residents, that you can share with your team, that you can share with your company. And every single week, um, what happens if you focus on kindness? Don't we reap what we sow? So if you need more kindness in your life, you got to sow more kindness in your life. If you need more love in your life, you got to be more loving, right? You got to be what it is that you need. So I want to show a couple of the success stories of the properties that have launched the kindness challenge at their community. Um, and, and so this, my goal is to create 1 million moments of kindness. And I have a, a Facebook group called 1M Moments. And this community is looking to share and create 1 million moments. And they have my butterfly sticker in a frame that says, I am one in a million. And all the artwork is available. Um, we did cute little signs. We created a hashtag love coming home. Um, every work order that went out, we put the kindness challenge postcard with it. Every pe person who came into tour, we gave them the kindness challenge. They can, they can be shared digitally, however you want to do it. Here's the little thank you for the opportunity to serve you. And then look on the back. And that was where the kindness challenge was. And they printed these little cards every week. Um, I think today... In, in kind of summary, we need to look at people are suffering from a loss of trust today. There are so many mischievous minds that are creating so many points. And that's one of the reasons, like Pete, you were saying, I, I started with data, real data points and real resources like the Edelman Trust Barometer, which is a global, I mean, they were just interviewed by the Harvard Business School. These are trustworthy things. I love to follow the Edelman's research. Um, it's incredible. They do over 30 countries. And I just listened yesterday to this interview of the main guy um, with the Harvard Business School. And he said this, he said, be substantive, which means having a firm basis in reality and therefore important, meaningful, and cons or considerable. I believe today we need to create meaningful moments for our residents. We need to build resident loyalty. And so I made a little list of some things I want you to think about focusing on this week, besides just the idea of having a red nose and wearing your heart on your nose today. Let your customers see you solving their problem. Um, I was on the phone with a supplier the other day and they have a moving company and, and she was talking about all the things they're doing in their trucks and everything that they're, and I said, have you done a video? Does your customer know you're doing all that? You need to not just do these great works quietly. We need a glass box approach. People need to be able to see. So she did a video of every step they're doing with their trucks and post on YouTube so that people can see today all the steps that you're taking to reopen. You need to share your plans, show your plans, give your customers confidence. Don't just sell them something. Show them how you're serving them. Communicate boldly about what you're doing to help them. Step forward and really let them see how it's happening. Uh, today, we need to look different than just property management. We need to extend the kind of services that we're offering to our customer. Share your decisions. If you um, join me at my private group, um, it's you have to ask to be a member, but I let you in. It's called Totally Tony Tell All. And at Totally Tony Tell All, I have a really great samples and examples of what people are doing to reopen with signage and, and some of the different things that people are doing. I create a hashtag commitment to the number two clean. Um, I also think it's really important right now that your residents see you as an essential worker. And right now, everybody just applaud. This the apartment industry people. Oh my gosh, I'm on all these groups, and it's like the main office is asking the front line how they're getting it done. 
because the frontline man is getting it done. Like they're like, how are you leasing? How are you getting all these renewals? They're just making it happen. But let's be real forward in our communication that our residents see us as essential workers and don't let your brand be just about your granite countertop. <laughs> don't let your brand be about your pool or your workout facility. I believe this and I'm said it before and I'm gonna say it right now and then I'm gonna say it again later on. And that is that our humanity is our greatest amenity. And, and I love that. Um, so I have just a couple more ideas for you. So um, you can go now the, in the years past, Pete, we've actually bought the red noses and passed out boxes of red noses and you could go to Walgreens and you could buy a red nose. But this year, because of social distancing, what you do is you donate online and then you click on Instagram, Facebook or Snapchat. And there's a special filter that will digitally unlock your red nose and put it on your face. And I will tell you, these are kind of hard to breathe and talk with. So it's just a digital one, but you can do that. So I'm going to ask you to go to um, rednoseday.org. So today I am starting a challenge. In fact, Pete and Tiffany, I've already, I've already tagged you guys, but here's my challenge. These are children that are hungry. This is not some guy on a corner that is easy to ignore that you think is gonna use the $25 for drugs or liquor. This is a kid who's hungry. And I think we can all spare $25. And I am going to challenge 25 of my friends to give $25 and then post their red nose day picture. And um, here, it's right. Oh, no, where'd it go? I thought I did a slide with it. And then I want you to, um, what's my red nose in the, the one? Yes, there. Oh. I have Pete's picture sitting on top of it. That's why I couldn't see it. There I am with my red nose. So that's my little fake red nose. Um, but I want to challenge you to um, donate $25, post your red nose, and then tag 25 friends to do the same. Last night, I watched the movie Pay It Forward, and I forgot how sad that movie was. <laughs> the little boy. I mean, I don't want to blow it in case some of you are going to go watch it. But um it was such a sweet movie. And I think that today, right here in this court conversation, that we could start a ripple and that we could all pay it forward and we could support these amazing charitable works to end child hunger, one red nose at a time. Thank you for joining me for my message today. And I hope you will join me in my challenge as well. Thank you, that's my part. Back to you, Pete. Well, hang on, Tony. Don't, don't go anywhere. I know we got questions. Uh, John, will you run into questions? Because I, I had a couple people text me questions, but I'm going to let you go first. You got anything up there? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Tony, can you tell us your private group again? We've had several people message in asking the it's name. Totally Tony Tell All. Totally Tony Tell All. Oh, here's the stop sharing. I want to go back to the group. I want to see everybody. You all are hello <laughs> hi everybody um so yes totally tony tell all hey, tony, I, 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 tony i had a question come through on just somebody texted me this what if i individually have passion to do my my not so much, you know, they, 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 they say it, but they don't really, they don't believe it. Like I believe it. This is the, my, my texting friend. What, how do they, how do you handle that? If it's just going to be you, maybe the rest of the group is not that into it. Well, I mean, the, the truth is that we all make choices about the world that we live in and we all have a culture and, and culture doesn't have to be created from the top down. Sometimes there's culture that's driven from the bottom up. And I would say absolutely positively do what you can. Like if you can spare $25 and honestly, if 25 is too much, 
click on other amount and put in what you can afford, but put your red nose on today. I mean, this is not about just company culture. This is about what we attract in our own personal life, about the decisions that about being a great human being. And, and I really do believe that we reap what we sow, that, that if we create this kind of a, even a small ripple like this in our culture, and I don't think you need permission from your management company to be kind. And I don't Thank think, you. Really, it's, it, you know, I mean, here's the thing, like, I always give a complete plan with all the artwork. And, you know, I mean, I was like, for those that are implementers and can implement, um, you know, I like to make sure that you've got that. In fact, I'll tell you what I will do in totally Tony tell all. I'll put samples of the note cards and all the artwork that we use to launch the kindness challenge at the property. Um, go look at totally Tony and look at the kindness challenges. Um, pick one <clears throat> and then just share that message in social. And it's really a matter of Pete of us doing what we can. And, um, and I just think that right now there is a lot being driven by the front line. And so, you know, I say, put your red nose on and, um, and wear your heart on your nose. Today is red nose day. This is a great momentum shift today. You know, shift happens. And, and so today you can make shift happen in the more positive direction. And, um, and, and, and I'll tell you, honestly, I mean, yesterday I had a big old meltdown cry fest, um, because I was mentoring somebody and I was all, you know, helping you and, and she turned it on me like, and I wasn't expecting it. And she said, what do you need? Well, I mean, my dad has stage four cancer. And, you know, I was going over to plant some flowers because he wants to sit in the back where he can see flowers. And I mean, I just started crying. I mean, every single moment of my day is not full of joy. Uh, you know, we're all struggling. And, and, but I, I think that we can, no, I know that we can positively influence others. And, but I, I really do believe it all starts with us, you know, to make sure. And sometimes you've got to dump all that nastiness out, you know, like you need to vent. And, and, um, and I know I'm answering this question really long. <laughs> we'll get to the next Shocking. question. Just one more little tip on this question. Um, you need to choose the proper vent. Like, don't go venting in the wrong vent place. You know, don't vent about your company to your residents. Don't vent about your husband to your mama. Because mm -mm -mm. your mama, you know, like you get a little bit of makeup sex and you're fine, but your mama's still mad. And so like you, you, you got to vent to the right place. So you have to find a safe place where you can go, Ugh! you know, and just like scream or whatever, but get it out. You know what I'm saying? Get it out. And then, then, um, and then come back to the world again and put your red nose on and, and keep going. Okay. Next question. <laughs> so, so uh, Tony's kind of to, to me. Um, you got to find something that you're passionate about. You got you to gotta find something that you're passionate about. And if, and maybe if you're not passionate about it, I I've seen some success where where I found another another resident was passionate about something. A local business had started something. They had started a, um, a court. They've done Move for Hunger, and other companies do different things. And I go, you know what? I love that. I don't have the bandwidth or the or maybe even the knowledge to get it all started, but I can help them support that. I can amplify their message. I can go to the event. I can join on social. I could find other people at my property that maybe believe that that's a good idea too, right? So. I believe you. I don't think, and I know this for a fact, we're not all Tony Blake, right? And it's, I mean, you just come up with this stuff like out of, out of nowhere, right? But for the rest of us, for some of us, a little harder. So I'm not going to recreate the wheel. So so for me, um, our friends out at, out at court, you know, for Move for Hunger, um, they've got a, they've got a, a hashtag um, get moving. And, and what they're thinking is to get people up and get moving. They're calling um, awareness to the shortage of food that people are hungry and and part of that challenge will be to, to go run a 5K and you're going to get a medal, um, but it's raising awareness and people can donate food and maybe donate money. And there's a lot more to it. Right. But I, 
I, I didn't create that, but I'm all over it. My son and I and, and, and Lynn, we're going to we're going to run. We're going to take some fun pictures. We're going to make some signs that say move for hunger. Hashtag get moving. And that really didn't cost us anything right now. We'll, we'll make a donation, too, but you don't have to I'll share the love a little bit. So I, I get intimidated sometimes, Tony, when you throw out all that stuff and I'm like, oh, that was a great idea. But, well, she already took that idea. I can't do that. What, what am I going to do next? So. I guess a follow-up, Tony, other than finding some passion, where where do I come up with these ideas? Where, where, how do I how do you how do I learn to be more creative? Yeah, well, I mean, I think that we all have gifts. You know, don't ask me to do the budget. <laughs> Good point. You know, don't ask me to do acquisitions. Don't ask me to do finances. Don't ask me to do. There's a lot you should not ask me to do. But give me a, a desktop publishing software and I can go just a little bit cray cray. I mean, I think it's about teamwork. It's about putting people on your team. So if the creativity is not your thing, then find somebody who is creative and put them on your team. Um, hey, put me on your team. Put me in, coach. You know, like I'm here for you. And, and so um, I created all the artwork. You know, that's one of the things too, Pete, is that um, I have a constant flow of stuff coming out of this brain. And so um, right now, the Totally Tony Tell All group, which is that um, you guys put in, the, that is where I'm telling all. I'm not sharing all of my artwork and all my ideas publicly. Um, totally Tony Tell All is kind of my laboratory right now. It's where I'm working with people and we're designing things and we'll put something up and then we'll take it down. They'll put something else up and and it's it's just a collaboration place and there's amazing ideas there. And so I say find somebody that you can partner with if it's not your thing. If you have the heart, but not the art, then just find the art, you know, make that your passion. I would add to that is like what I'm doing now is I'm reading a lot. I'm on I'm on webinars. I'm on webinars like this. Um, I follow Tony. Uh, I follow Lisa Trezine and Kate Good and all these other um, motivational people in the industry. There are more ideas, and it's okay to borrow, share, twist, turn it um, from reading about it. But if you're a thousand percent stressing and a thousand percent working all the time, guess what? You're, you're not growing. You're not getting better. You're not helping other people. Take a break. Sit back. Uh, just get on totallytony.com, right? Just just spend some time on there, right? And you'll get you'll get plenty of inspiration. Hey, I saw a chat come in from from Adam from Move for Hunger. Are you out there, Adam? Adam, you're probably on mute. There you are. Okay. Hey. Adam, Adam, this is a moment to shine. Get, give us a, a minute or two on uh, on Move for Hunger, man, while, while we got you. Absolutely. So uh, thank you so much. Um, Move for Hunger has been working really, really hard during COVID-19. Over the past nine weeks, we've distributed more than uh, 700,000 pounds of food to food banks across the country, enough to feed over a half a million people. Um, the food banks in every community are struggling right now, um, as are just many people. So we put together a really fun campaign to get people moving. I know we're all physically apart right now, but here's an opportunity to do something together, to do something fun. Um, we're asking for a small donation, $25 if you can. As Pete said, even if you can't, we still want people doing these things together, um, getting out there, having a good time. Um, your support is going to help us feed so many more. And uh, we're so grateful for the partnership we have with Court, as well as so many property management companies across the country. Thank you, Adam. Where do we go if we want to we want to we want to latch onto this idea and maybe we want our property to 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 get involved and is it our time frame and just Absolutely. give us a little more detail. You can go to moveforhunger.org slash get dash moving. I put the link in the chat. All the details are there. You're gonna get some social media uh, um, uh, uh, frames to put up there. You'll get a medal if you complete it. You can even get a move for hunger t-shirt. Um, everything is there. We're gonna be doing this by the end of June. So you get about a month um to get moving. I, I love that because it's not just one day. I mean, red nose day, right? But move for hunger. Um, and I am so pleased to have been a part of this. Um, Pete, you crazy guy. After the um, the storm in Houston, Court Furniture bought out 
the comedy club at Comedy Improv in Houston and opened it up. And I toured professionally as a comedian for um, five years. And we did an apartment comedy show and um, and we featured the Move for Hunger and it was so fantastic. So I'm so happy that you're here, Adam, and showing the apartment communities how they can engage in a program that's not just one day. It's, uh, you know, hunger and food waste are year round issues. Um, Court and our multifamily partners have now distributed more than 100,000 pounds of food um, to food banks across the country. And uh, this thing's growing. So it's, it's really all of you on this call that are making it happen. And we're just so grateful for all the support. So awesome. Hey, Adam, if um, how many properties are involved right now? A couple thousand? We have about 1,500 properties currently participating, about 300,000 units. Uh, we're looking for more management companies to, to get involved this year. We know COVID has thrown everything for a little bit of a mix, but I can tell you we had a property last month in Seattle and just by their residents moving out, no food drive, no event, uh, the residents moving out donated 800 pounds of food, which we got to a food bank up there in Seattle. So at its core, Move for Hunger is about giving residents that opportunity to donate their food when they move. Certainly there's fun food drives and fundraisers and special events, um, but it's really about just making um, food recovery part of the process. And in doing this, your properties can be greener and more sustainable and more community oriented by doing nothing more than your jobs. It's awesome, it's awesome. I'm just sitting here thinking, you know, if we have 1500 properties now God, how many properties are there in the in the country there's there's thousands and thousands what if we had 3000 i mean what if there were 6000 properties would, would that that would literally change the food insecurity in this country so it would. I think it's, it's one out of 5 people have food insecurity in the united states and it's probably getting worse that's an old stat that's pre covid if we could go from 1500 properties to 4,500 to 5,000, which really isn't that many, we're gonna change the country. We're gonna change what the food insecurity. 100%, um, it, it's really about getting involved and, and doing it easy in easy ways, right? Um, um, helping feed people does not have to be a hard thing. And that's why we're so thrilled to have um, the multifamily industry beginning to get involved. And Pete, what you just said is kind of how Move for Hunger started. We started with my family's moving company in New Jersey, one moving company. Now we have more than a thousand across the entire United States and Canada. And the same thing happened in multifamily, eight properties in Seattle expanding to 1500 over just two years. So we're, we're excited to see how quickly we can get this to grow. Um, and I will say the need is so pressing right now. Our food banks are being tested like never before. Um, there are people that are unemployed, making difficult choices, whether to buy food for their kids or pay their rent or utilities or medical bills. So now is the time, if ever, to get involved. Um, it's going to have such an incredible impact. And this is where they you get you have special boxes. I've seen the boxes, we and then have food collection bags. So when residents move out, they get a bag. We create a digital marketing flyer to educate the customer to donate their food when they move the resident. Um, and then we're working with Court and other transportation partners who will pick that food up free of charge on a monthly basis and bring it to the food bank in your community, so it always stays local. It's just managing managing our resources in a way that we take care of ourselves. And many people don't want to carry those cans to the next place, but giving them an opportunity to donate. I mean, that is just such a simple and meaningful solution. And um, I, I I don't know if you made the whole the whole talk, Adam, but in the very beginning, I gave a lot of data points on how people choose purpose-driven companies and how important it is. And I don't know if you've seen the trend watching glass box trend, um, but I, you know, I shared some real reasons because I truly believe that the, the more character that we show good character, the more we're going to get back good character in our residents. And Adam, right now we're about to reopen our industry and we are going to need cooperation from our residents and um and and resident loyalty and and the relationship and the you know relationship equity has never been more important and and so we want to sow good seeds and this is such a perfectly brilliant um way to do something meaningful i'm so glad you're here good to see you, you. And, 
and and it's not just connecting with your residents, which is incredibly important, but it's it's connecting with your employees as well. People want to work for socially responsible companies, and people want to feel good about doing their jobs. And Move for Hunger is one of many, many other charitable initiatives out there. But it's a very simple way that just by as an industry doing our job coming together, we're going to be able to feed people. And for the property management companies with a ton of properties. We have ways to make this fun and competitive to see who's collecting the most food because you compete on everything else. Why not compete to see how many people we can feed in our communities? And, and I think that one of the points I was trying to make is that it's not about tooting your own horn. I think the reason why people would hide it, it was like you do charitable works, but you don't tell anybody. Right. Um, but then when we do that, we leave our residents out and engaging our residents in our charitable work. I mean, you've built an opportunity to do what all the trends are telling us to do and frankly what our own human heart is telling us to do and i think today with everybody focused on different things to just focus on a hungry child and not just today in red nose day but in what your plan is offering um i just think it makes us all feel good when we do good and we all need to feel good right now yeah we do <laughs> tony i think and i think sharing it what it really does like we're sharing it today with hundreds and hundreds of people somebody some people are going to do something with that so so we're not to our own for any other reason than to share the love and guess what four five six you might get 10 more properties out of this today now you i'm glad you got up i'm glad you got on the call right so so we have to we have to share it you got to share it in the right way but just share it out of love if you if you really care about it and you're passionate about it uh, um, share it. Now, if you can get creative like Tony does, now we're talking. Now we got something going. We can make hunger your, the central thing at your property. I mean, if we all got together and brainstormed about this, you could really make this really cool at the property, at your property. See, I'm starting to get excited about it. And maybe it's not this particular uh, cause. Maybe it's not hunger. Maybe there's something else that you're passionate about at your property or somebody on the property is. Grab a hold of it. Right, grab a hold of it. Bring in some people to help you. Um, you know, it's it's like 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 it's a village, right? And then it just starts to get momentum, and then share it, and then at some point tell Tony about it, and then it'll be all over the country. Hey, Adam, what do they do to get started? I mean, how simple is it to get started? I'm just curious. It's super easy to get started. Um, if you visit moveforhunger.org/join, you fill out a form. Um, there's a donation that you'll make. We'll get you the bags, customized materials. I set you up with a local food bank if you don't have one in mind already. Um, and then throughout the year, we'll provide some fun resident engagement ideas as well. Um, and we've uh, organized a ton of food drives with our, our property partners um, last year and, and uh, you know, moving forward. Well, you know, I would like to donate my brain um, and some brain power and creative power. Um, I would love to create some really fun engagements with the residents. Um, I would love to just have a brainstorming session with your team. Heck yeah. <laughs> Together a bunch of I want to I want to totally, join. Totally, totally totally inspired um ways to feed. I just think this is so smart. It's so smart because the residents are moving. They don't want to carry the food. The kids need it. I mean, goodness. It's just so, so, so smart. Again, sorry to be, um, but how much is that initial donation? Because things are tough and tight right now. I'm just curious. Totally, it's 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 a $200 donation per property. Um, and it helps cover the cost of the food collection bags and the materials. Um, it's unlimited bags for the year and, and also support for some of the hopefully crazy ideas that we're gonna come up with as well um, together. And certainly I will take you up on that offer. Yes, absolutely. So let's make plans, especially right now where I got nothing going on. <laughs> Hey, hey Tony, Tony, let's pick let's pick a a, a management company or a property. Uh, I'll pay pay the first fee, right? You you build it, and and I want to be on the committee, and let's build it, but let's share it, right? We're going to share it with everybody on this call first, give them a little head start, and we'll share it with everybody. Let's build something that can be duplicated, um, but we'll help somebody that really couldn't afford to do it, right? But we we'll have to find. Yeah, you pay the two hundred, and I'll provide the marketing for free, so they get you. And Tiffany, yes. Tiffany, I'm going to challenge you and your team, challenge you and your team, find, find that property with real passion, you know, and, 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 and that we can do some good work with it. We don't, I don't want to just give somebody something they don't run with it. I got somebody who wants to earn it, wants to love it. Right. So you, I'm going to put that on you and John Lee to find that, find those people. 
uh, find that property and we'll, we'll get with Adam and, and brainstorm this thing. And Adam, this is how brainstorming goes. Tony does it all, creates it and goes, what do you think? We go, yay! <laughs> <laughs> well, she she hasn't worked with me in my crazy mind yet, so I'm very excited That's about true. this. True. Yeah. <laughs> and, and let's do this too, Pete. Let's share the whole story so that everybody has samples of the tools, copies of everything. Um, I'm going over to Totally Tell All when we hang up. I'm going to put my challenge there, and I created a Red Nose Day um, post. Just because it's Red Nose Day, Adam. So I'm going to do the Red Nose today. But tomorrow, I'm get my red nose today too, because because that's you know, also you know, really important. I'm gonna tag you. Um, but tomorrow, let's feature, let's piggyback on Red Nose Day with the move for hunger. Um, and 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 so you know, let's get together this afternoon, honestly, and put something that we can post tomorrow. I mean, there's no time like right now. You got it. Like right now. So, so Tony, this is a good example. So, so if I'm a property in some in some some city in America, I'm gonna find if I'm doing this, I'm gonna find a supplier or two that are really passionate about stuff. I'm gonna who's who's who in my town is the is the motivational, inspirational person. I'm gonna get them on the phone. We're gonna do a Zoom a Zoom meeting and have this conversation. Could be about move for hunger. Could be about something else, right? But but start, you know. Get get some creative ideas. Go make it make a difference. Only if you're passionate about it. If you're just doing it for, because you know so your boss told you to, that won't work. But um, I I get a little network of people together and, and make it happen. And remember that all of the data points that I shared in the very beginning. I want you to see the two hundred dollars as marketing money. Even though it's a charitable contra contribution and you're going to get all the bags and everything back for it, it becomes a reason to rent. People are choosing companies and products that are passionate and purpose driven. And what could be better than feeding hungry children? And, and so um, the $200, I want you to see that. Go to your resident retention part of your budget. Go to um, different parts of your budget to look for it. See if you have where you can pull the money from, but see it as marketing dollars. And when you get the campaign going, some of the things that I want to make sure happen is that you have social posts, that you have pictures of your teams picking up food, and you pictures of the, the truck coming to pick up the food and go to the kids, pictures of the food going to the kids. I mean, tell the whole story in social and 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 I think there ought to be a big display in the office. Um, we had boxes, um, Adam, when we were at the comedy club that we had stacked up and we took funny pictures. I mean, why not have a photo booth or, you know, anything like when residents and, and, our, and our property partners have done an amazing job um, finding those creative outlets to, to create. We provide a number of the content pieces that you mentioned already. And the other thing, driving back to your initial points about data, um, it, it is about data, right? Because we want to talk about the impacts together. So we already have several properties that they can now say they've fed, you know, 1,000, 2,000 people or reduced this amount of food from ending up in landfills, which, you know, correlates to more greenhouse gas emissions. There are so many ways to use these data points in your marketing. Um, and at the same time, you're helping to feed people. So we see this as a very easy win-win. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm I'm really, really glad that last week when we were talking about um, should I come back and do this call again? And when I realized it was Red Nose Day, I mean, anything to be in public with a red nose on my face and have it be like a really good social statement um, and um, and and to have it turn into this. I just love life. Life. I mean, I know that Pete knew what he was doing. But I didn't know Adam was coming and I, I just feel so blessed right now in this moment that once again, I feel like from the call us getting together that there's going to be a ripple of positive change in the world and man that just that is definitely my heart for sure. We don't tell you everything I had to throw you a couple of curveballs every, every <laughs> once in a while. I right? Hey, so. So I did have a, uh, I don't, why are people texting me questions? So they, they wanted to know, um, uh, they wanted to ask everybody else, 
what other ideas, not necessarily CSR related, what other hot topics are out there? What are the, what are the biggest topics that maybe we should talk about next week or the following week? So I know we did one touring so that's that was a no-brainer but what are the other topics that are hot in the industry right now something that we should we should be reading about and maybe we should have a, a coffee conversation about in the future just from your your point of view what's hot glass <laughs> plexiglass i mean everybody's reopening um i would love to know what everybody's doing with plexiglass what does it look like where are they installing it um you know uh i'd like to know i'd like to know the the reopening plans pete right now everybody's trying to figure that out i was on a call yesterday with marcia bollinger and she's real connected with naa and we were saying we need naa to do a covid addendum for the lease that we can all follow um because there's going to be some liability and we cannot monitor six feet apart and residents are going to come in and want to complain and turn in other residents for not <clears throat> having done things right and we can't we just can't fill that role and as we come into this um we need personal accountability on the residents part and so um i think that's a huge topic have somebody legal come have somebody talk have somebody with construction come and talk about where to get plexiglass have samples and examples of what the ones that are already the states that have already opened what it looks like um i think that would be really helpful um that's just me yeah, i was going to say you know that your you talk about commitment to clean is 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 huge and everything about how way to to share that messaging um i took my son to the dentist uh last week and it was crazy in there and they and they weren't following the guidelines doing all that and, and we were we were going to a new dentist and guess what we we, we pulled out right we went to a dentist we just and and separation people waited in their cars and all those things and i'm like this place i like but they had the commitment to clean they had all they had it all they had the plexiglass and I you know what I feel better there and I'm going to I'm going to share like my other friends who have kids my his age. Guess what? That's a good place to go. Same thing with properties. It's the same thing. You got to we, we, we need to talk about this. Yeah, I think it's I, it's really the next big thing that everybody's dealing with. Uh, would you guys agree? Is that going on right now? Trying to figure out how to reopen and and um, and what that looks like. And I think that a lot of what we talked about this week is really good to do this week because there's a lot coming down the road in which it's not going to be the best messaging where we're going to have to get them to sign an addendum before we reopen. You need every resident to sign that addendum before you reopen. Because when you reopen, you've not got anything on them to say, like, you know, once you've gave them the, you open it back up, you don't have a reason to sign the addendum. But if you say, once everybody signed the addendum, then we'll reopen. Um, and that really is about them being accountable, them saying that they're gonna follow the rules and and residents joining us and you know um so that's i would definitely have somebody here pete with with um construction plexi and then um when y'all get through that i'll come back and do something fun maybe adam and i'll come back with all of our ideas for um move longer. let's do it well good <laughs> I think we got to we got to wrap it up, right? We got to finish it up. So I'm not sure that's going to be the topic. Tiffany, you'll get with come up with what the topic is next week. We have these coffees and conversations every Thursday, right? To 10:30 Eastern. So right. this was so much fun. Tony, 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 virtual hugs. Um, you are the best. We really appreciate you, Adam. You're okay too. Okay, thank you for <laughs> you're awesome. Thank you for your good work, Tiffany, John Lee. Let's close it out. Guys, Tony, Adam, Pete, thank you so much. Um, like we said, share ideas with your court partner or with Tony on what you would like to hear for future topics. Um, we just continue to grow and we love to see everybody um, on today as I still have my court nose on. Um, Tony, share with us one more time how you want people to contact you. So um, you can contact me by going to, I'm really big on Facebook. So um, you can you can follow my friend wall, but it's full. There's 5,000 people. They won't let me have any more friends. 
which I think is so rude. Um, but it, it, if you, I've got like 360 people sitting in the waiting room waiting to be my friend, and I feel so bad about that. Um, but but you can follow. So if you go and you find me with my red nose on, actually, I think it's a picture of my mom and I right now, and you see my friend while you can follow me, and then you can see everything going on there. I have totallytony.com, which is my brand, and I have a Facebook page with my brand, totallytony.com. And then my laboratory where I'm playing with ideas and posting artwork and putting things kind of privately is my totally Tony tell all. And um, if you join the totally Tony tell all, that's where um, this week we're going to be focusing, Pete. I want to see pictures of the plexiglass. I want to see copies of and samples of addendums. I want to know, are they making sure the residents have all signed it before they open? How are they really putting out that um, uh, accountability? How are they managing the, the relations? And uh, like, obviously that one business, that dentist <clears throat> is not managing it, not really making it happen. Um, and I don't think we can legally require them to do it, but we can inspire them to do it. Um, and, and so this, this definitely messaging is going to be really big in how we engage our residents on this return. And I don't think it's over. I think that, you know, I think this whole, um, there's going to be a ton of people who are going to peel that mask off the minute they don't have to and go to the beach and hang out. And, you know, they're going to be in the bars and I mean, like, they're going to forget about it. But there is going to be a percentage of people who are going to be looking for us to demonstrate integrity on an ongoing basis. So totally Tony tell all Facebook is really the best way to just really see where I'm out playing. Hey, hey, oh, Tiffany, you, Tiffany, so we got a we got a gift from Loop and Tie for the best, most creative idea, somebody that gives you the coolest picture, Tony. So you can you uh, and so thanks to our friends at loop and tie which is a great gifting service so um we'll, we'll get that done i know we're i know we're over to, uh, tiffany absolutely no thank you guys so much this has been a great conversation we hope everyone has a wonderful memorial day weekend stay safe and we will see you next thursday bye, bye, guys. bye everyone thanks for joining us <laughs>